Hi, my name is Ivy and welcome back. I'm about to do a get ready with me for this look, um, but it's less about the look and more about getting to know me. I am going to answer some questions that are part of the part-time YouTuber tag. I use that very loosely because I am hardly a part-time YouTuber. I'm more like a semi, occasionally once in a while YouTuber. But I thought it would just be a good guidepost to sort of get to know me and answer some questions and talk a little bit about my life, not just including makeup and beauty, but but other things as well. So anyway, if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about me and how I did this look, then stay tuned and keep watching. Hey, it's Editing Ivy over here, and um, for whatever reason, I didn't collect slash record the clip of me answering the very first question of the part-time YouTuber tag, which I feel like is a pretty important question to answer, so I'm just inserting this little clip of me post-filming um, on my phone to answer that question. So I... Outside of this, which is clearly a very small portion of my time, I have a full-time job and I work as a vice president group art supervisor, which is a fancy way of saying an art director. I'm an art director and I um, have been working for the last five years at a company that specializes in marketing within the pharma space, specifically patient patients um, who are dealing with often rare diseases and serious diseases. And we work with medical companies that have new drugs coming out, et cetera, to work on their marketing materials and make sure everything is super health literate and easy to understand and hopefully beautiful. And that's what I've been doing for the last five years is working with that particular company. Before that, I was working in advertising um, for a social media company, more or less, that worked with all different brands. Um, beauty, food, alcohol, toys, everything you can imagine um, to create like social media campaigns for them. And then before that, I was working, um, I had like a whole nother career as a um, development and like a development specialist and fundraiser for nonprofit organizations. I worked for um, a museum in New York City. I worked for a film center in Westchester. I've worked for a lot of different places. Um, and I, I spent about the first eight years of my career post-college working in that sort of fundraising and development field before I made the transfer into graphic design, which is what I studied in school. I studied graphic design. I love it. Um, and I just, when I graduated in 2008 and the market tanked, I basically had to take a job, whatever job I could get. And I ended up in, in fundraising. I worked for organizations that I loved, but I didn't love what I was doing. So I made the transition into art direction finally after years of working at night on the side, picking up freelance projects, building my portfolio. I was able to find a company that took a chance on me and gave me a full-time job. And then that's been my career ever since. And I love it and I'm super passionate about it. And um, it's, it's my full-time job that I have no intention of giving up. I think YouTube will always be likely a part-time thing for me and I like it that way because it keeps it fun and it keeps it as my hobby and that's that's really that's really why I do it because it's fun for me and I, I don't want to make it my job and I like my job um, so that's the revised answer to my <laughs> first first question which I somehow did not record anyway back to the regular video okay I caught my other eyebrow up to the one that I just did. Um, now I'm just going in with my Verdant Force Field from Phytosurgeons. I use this every single day. This is like the first thing that I do after I do my brows. And I usually um, do my brows first just because, if, especially if I'm using the brow flick, it doesn't adhere to the skin as well if the skin isn't totally dry. So I find that it's best to do my moisturizing and all that after I've applied my brows so hydrating and also has a lovely like faintly green tea smell it's it's really really nice so the second question on the part-time youtuber tag asks what made you want to start youtube i it's an easy answer it's just that i love youtube and i've loved youtube for a long time and i watch a lot of youtube much in the way that i consume regular television i love the content creators that i follow on youtube something that i you know at some point thought mm, maybe if i love it so much i can do it too 
I'm just applying a layer of the new vitamin C, the new vitamin C putty primer from e.l.f. Cosmetics. I'm trying it out. I've been using their salicylic acid one for a while that I like a lot under makeup, but I thought I might try the vitamin C one just to see, just to see how I liked it. I just love YouTube and I love YouTubers that I follow and it's fun to make content. And I, as an art director in my regular life, just have a strong desire to make things and make fun, fun things and make beautiful things. And so it was sort of just a natural inclination to want to do that for my, for my beauty content. I think the thing I struggle with is that because of my schedule and because of the time that I have to do this, which is not a lot, I feel like a perfectionist that is constantly failing, like I'm never able to really achieve at this moment the level of content and creation that I want to, but I'm still interested enough in doing it that I want to keep trying and strive for that perfection. And I'm hoping once we move, um, I mentioned in my last video that we are moving this summer, that I will have more space. I don't think I'm gonna have more time, <laughs> but I think I'm gonna have more space. Like right now I'm filming in our attic and I have a lot of constraints as to like how and where I can film, where my lights can go and all of that stuff. So I, I don't, I'm not able to have like a real background. I think that'll all get a lot better when I have an actual studio room that I can set up and make perfect and beautiful. So the next question is, um, you know, what is your channel about? And, uh, you know, do you have a niche or do you just talk about a lot of different things? Um, I'm just going in with the Ordinary Serum Foundation. I have the shade 1.2 Y. I've been playing around with this a little bit um, more recently just to see how I like it. Sometimes I use fingers, sometimes I use a brush. I don't know, I've never used this foundation brush before with it, um, so I'm just, seeing how it applies, but I just wanted like a really light, light layer of base today. Um, but yeah, so I, my channel right now is about beauty and makeup and it is likely to stay that way, probably, although never say never, maybe I'll branch out and talk about other things, but it is something that I love and something that I'm passionate about. And at the moment, it's something that I really love talking about. And so that's where my face forward Instagram persona came from. And that's where this YouTube channel came from. Um, and I don't currently have any plans to, like I said, branch out. Although I love and follow a lot of different YouTubers on here. Certainly not just makeup and beauty, although that's a lot of what I watch. Um, I just think for me, it's, you know, I'm... I'm never going to be that person that starts like lifestyle um, vlogging or as much as I enjoy that content from other people, like I'm not going to start doing that. It's just not a part of my life. And I'm even questioning now how much I share about my life as is like on Instagram that's, you know, permanently uploaded to like servers someplace that I have no control over. You know, I, I think about these things sometimes. Um, so I'm probably not going to start vlogging or, you know, sharing a lot more than I do now. If anything, I might share less, but again, never, never say never. Um, okay. So that's foundation. Pretty, pretty good. I'm going to go in with some concealer. Um, I'm trying to finish this up. This is the Rare Beauty uh, concealer and I have the shade 230N. I really have come to love this concealer and I do wear it most days. I'm not trying to use it up um, because I'm trying to get rid of it. I'm just trying to be better about using my products. Um, so I've been actively like, hey, let's use this and make a dent in it. As someone who loves beauty, I definitely buy more than I'm able to use on my face all the time. And I'm just, again, trying to be more conscious about how often I'm using my products because they're not meant to be sitting on your shelf, they're meant to be used. And that's the whole point of having them. Um, and I'm trying to curb my collector vibes and energy. That's kind of an inherent part of me and really focus more on using everything that I love and buy. Okay, so the next question is, do you think you might ever wanna go into YouTube full time versus it just being a side gig? I think this is a perfect segue for me into just a little bit more about 
me and my life and why it is highly unlikely that this will ever become a full-time gig. Um, one is that I started Face Forward, my Instagram channel, and this YouTube channel for fun. It is fun for me, and that's why I'm doing it. And I think if it were to turn into a full-time job, I'm not so sure that I would love it as much in the same way anymore. I, I do, I'm one of these people that I don't mind that there is a delineation for me between work and my hobbies. I don't necessarily feel the desire to make my hobby a full-time job. I know a lot of people do or think that that's the dream, but I guess I'm just not one of those people. I don't know, I've never really seen it that way. And that's not to say that in a perfect world, if I could do this more that I wouldn't, I definitely would, but I'm fun. I'm fine with it being a hobby and I'm fine with it being for fun. Um, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of bronzer. This is the putty bronzer in, I think it's Tan Lines um, by uh, e.l.f. Cosmetics. So I like to use it with a really dense brush. This one in particular is my favorite from Pixi. It's like a foundation brush and it just, because this bronzer is so creamy and smooth, it just blends it into the skin super effortlessly. My life is such that now um, I'm a mom, I have a son, and he is still very young. He's, um, I think actually yesterday, he just turned 19 months old. Uh, I am married, I have a dog, I am 35, yes, I'm 35, I'll be 36 in November. I work full time and my life is is busy. I think as you know, most people are busy. Um, I have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things that I take care of every day and a lot of things that I do. And I love spending time with my son and I love spending time with my family. And especially now that it's nice out, I love being outside and going out with our dog and, and finding new things to do because we have a little kid and he's experiencing everything for the first time. Like I love to do so many things. And this is just a small part of my life and it is fun for me and it is something that I enjoy doing, but I, I don't see it taking over my life. I just see it as being, again, one, one small part of my, my very big life. And like I mentioned before, I love my job. I really do. I like my job a lot and I like the people that I work with. And I think that if I were to be doing something like this full time, it might be very lonely and isolating. Like I like working with people, although I also like working from home. That's the thing is I have been working from home since the pandemic started. I will say that it is very difficult for me to imagine going back to working in an office full time again. I know a lot of you probably have had no choice whether or not you've been able to work remotely or not. Your jobs might mean that you haven't had that option. I have been very fortunate and I've had that option and I have certainly used it. And so my entire, the entire life of my son and the entire time I was pregnant, I've been home working. Working from home has meant that I've been able to do more beauty content because I've just had time in between, you know, things where I've been able to squeak it in. And that's something that I never had before. So for that reason too, I really hope I can continue to work from home. So the next question is, how do you, how do you film and edit and how do you run your channel? Um, and I'm laughing because the answer is I don't really, obviously I'm not putting out that many videos. Um, at present, and so I would say that I don't have a great answer to any of that. Sometimes I film at night after Ollie is asleep, although it's hard to do that because I have so much else on my plate that I need to do. Hopefully try to create a better schedule for myself to be able to do more frequent videos. A lot of the reason that I haven't been able to film recently as much is just because we're, we're moving and there's been so many other things that have had to take priority over filming. I film on a Canon EOS 60D. That was my husband's um, really nice camera and he bought me a beautiful lens. That's what I used to film. It's not the best camera for filming versus photography just because the like as you probably noticed, like the focus isn't as easy to manage on this camera. It's like not meant for this kind of video work, but I use it anyway, because it's a beautiful camera. And then I have a ring light and I have two additional softbox lights that I use 
um, currently for lighting. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention what I'm doing with my eyes. I'm doing a base layer of this Glossier Sky Wash in the shade Valley. That's going to serve as like my eyeshadow base for today. I personally don't have a very advanced setup. Um, oh, I also have a microphone. I bought like a really cheapy one from Amazon. Um, I think it's like an Amazon mini mic basics or something. Uh, that that's what I use to record my audio. It's right here in front of me. And that is is kind of it. You know, I don't think I'm ever going to be one of those people that can get out a video a week, let alone more than that. Um, I'm lucky if I get out a video a month, but I would love to be able to do more just because it is fun. And I think when my setup is better and a little easier to manage, uh, I, I think I will be able to do more than I've been doing. Honestly, these sky washes, I think they're they're underrated. I um, I happen to like them. I was going to declutter them a while ago, but I feel like they're really good for just like base matte makeup. There's probably a million other things that would work just as well, but I do like the colors that they came in and I reach for them fairly frequently. I'm gonna try this Color Stay Glay Stick by Revlon. Oh, this is broken. Oh crap. Anyway, this is fun. Um, I just wanted a little bit of a glaze and I have a million shadows that could do it, but I wanted to use this guy because I like the look. That's not half bad. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's probably pretty subtle. The next question is about, you know, do you pre-plan your filming or do you just kind of like go with it? Sometimes I just get ideas in the middle of the night and I'll write them down on my phone for looks that I want to do. They don't often end up in actual videos, but I'll just have ideas of things that I want to film. And I rarely, if ever, create like an actual outline of what I want to do. I just have bullets. I just have bullets of ideas and I'll, you know, plan things out in my head, which is very much the opposite of how I operate at work. Like when it's my job to direct something, I try to think of every last detail and be extremely focused on pre-planning and it's just funny that that doesn't necessarily translate to this stuff but again that's why I'm that's what I mean when I say like this is supposed to be fun and for me if I had to do a ton of work um up front to get anything done I would it would put me off of it you know what I mean like I really like being able to kind of just fly with it and do what I want for me the priority has been giving open and honest reviews and so if somebody were to send me something or ask me to be a part of a campaign in which there was a chance that I would be forced into talking about a product that I wasn't excited to talk about or didn't have strong positive feelings towards it and then couldn't be honest about that, like that doesn't fly with me. And so you're probably not going to see a lot of sponsored content generally on my page because I really don't agree to very much. Working in the industry on the other side, like I totally know what goes into these things and I know the ins and outs of how the business works. And to be totally honest, I just have no desire to entrench myself in that on this side of things. Even if it means that I'm giving up opportunities potentially, um, let somebody else have them. And I like to use the things that I wanna use and sometimes that aligns with a brand wanting to send me something and that's awesome and sometimes it doesn't. I have no desire to suddenly be beholden to companies that send me things to like churn out content. It's just not my, not where I'm headed. I really enjoy being able to show you what I'm using every day and I also feel like if I were to suddenly get a giant influx of PR, which I know a lot of people that I follow get a ton of PR, like what am I going to do with all that stuff? They're, they have boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that they'll never be able to use all of it. I bet you anything that a lot of it ends up being wasted. And I, I just, I don't need a box of every single color of foundation that a brand launches. It's just not my speed. So sorry if that means that I, I don't end up being the first one to review something because I'm not going to go out and buy every new release. That's not hopefully why you're here. Hopefully you're here because you like my POV on the things that I use or you have a similar style of makeup or a similar ethos in the way that you live because I'm just never going to be that girl that is like first in line with all of the new things that have launched. <laughs> okay, so the last question is what do you think the hardest part about being a part-time YouTuber is? And that is a really easy question for me to answer because 
It's just that I have a lot of ideas of things that I want to do. In an ideal world, I would have infinite time to do everything that I want to do in my life, but I don't. I have very finite time. The creator in me and the perfectionist in me that wants to do it all and can't. I also struggle with technology sometimes. I'm fairly tech savvy, but it takes practice to use all of this equipment and technology effectively and efficiently and people that do this day in day out all the time are experts at it. I feel like I end up just kind of doing what I'm used to because I'm too afraid to like mess things up and not have them work out or fail which is a terrible attitude to have. I don't want to be oriented that way you know, afraid to fail or feel like I don't have time to fail, but sometimes that's that's just how I end up feeling. I just want to always succeed in everything that I do all the time. And failure, failure I take so personally. <laughs> like, I'm not a fan of failure. And actually when I changed careers, that was like the biggest risk was that I ran the risk of failure. That was my biggest motivational tool was like, well, I, I can't fail. I can't fail at this. I have to, I, if I'm doing this, then it has to work out. And I put that kind of pressure on myself. Probably not the healthiest thing. This is the 1999 Beauty uh, pencil, color pencil in Barna. It's like my go-to brown liner pencil just because it's incredibly smooth and pigmented and easy to blend out. You can do so many things with their pencils. You can do your whole face with just their pencils. They're amazing. So anyway, that's that's the last formal question from the tag. One thing I wanted to talk a little bit about that I've talked somewhat about on Instagram, where I'm at with consumption and, and what I'm buying and how I'm buying and how I'm spending my money. I've been following more and more people on this platform that make videos about being conscious consumers and being really thoughtful about makeup that comes into their collection. I mean, Hope Mess Tom, who I'm obsessed with, they always talk about curating what comes into their collection and being really um, aware of, of what they're doing and what they're spending their money on. Hannah Louise Poston, she does the same kind of content. You know, she'll do self-sponsored reviews and sort of plan out what her money is going towards very carefully. They're always talking about how to shop your stash and how to use what you have and love what you have. And I've really been loving that kind of content recently and vibing with that kind of content. It very much aligns with where I want to be. But the truth is that there's just a part of me that still gets a thrill and joy from from buying and, and receiving new things. And it's not my favorite thing about myself. I don't love that that's an association that I have with comfort. It's not that I think there's something wrong with treating yourself as long as you're living within your means and you're not putting yourself in financial ruin to buy a lipstick. It's been a really interesting time for me to like look inwards, especially as we're getting ready to move. And a move is a pivotal time to kind of start fresh and like relook at your whole life, all your items, everything you have. I mean, we're gonna start packing over the next two months and I am going to be forced to look at everything that I own, like in boxes and make decisions. And I think that's a good thing. It's coming at a really good time. For me, starting a monthly beauty budget that I'm aware of and stick to and really hone in on a wish list versus just impulse spending has been hugely helpful. I am so happy with how that's kind of rewired my brain and made me be so much more aware of what I'm buying and what's coming into my collection. I'm going to look for a brush to do a little bit of a hit of color on my lower lash line. I'm gonna try and use the shade Spooky from the Batty Bean and Shroud collab. It's freaking Bats collection. Um, I just love this palette. I love this color. Kind of just want a soft shadow hit of blue in my lower lash line here to offset the kind of caramel peachy tones of the rest of the shadow that I did. Hopefully this is focusing on my lower lash line so you guys can see the little hit of blue that I just did. It's such a pretty shade. Spooky. It's like a more intense periwinkle kind of blue. 
Okay, so I have this um, rouge quad. It's actually a lip quad. I really like this shade here, this very neutral, dusty mauve color. I think I'm going to use a little bit of this shade as my blush, but I just want something that's going to kind of give me some rosiness. A lot of times lipstick can easily double as a blush. That's a pro tip that I learned from Katie Jane Hughes like years ago. Never occurred to me before she said it that you could use a lipstick as a blush or, you know, just to think about your products as being multi-purpose, even if they're not listed as multi-purpose products. Lipstick as blush, really easy way to get a very cohesive look. So I'm going to use one of my lip pencils. This is the Makeup Forever lip pencil in Full Scale Rust. I'm going to line my lips with that and then I'm going to go in with that color in the middle. Also talking and lining your lips at the same time doesn't really work. Okay, so line my lips and I'm just taking my finger and dipping it into that quad to the same shade I put on my cheeks. And I like that it kind of contrasts the eye a bit. It's a bit more mauve and pinker than the caramel on the eyes. I like how that looks. Okay, I'm about to do something that I wasn't planning on doing, but I just saw this in my stash over there. This is um, a Metamorphic Highlighter by Ritual de Fee. This is in the shade the Chimera. The Chimera. I don't know how you say it. It looks like this. I don't know if you can kind of see the reflect. It's a very unusual almost like green tinted highlighter this really doesn't go with this look at all but i just saw it and i was like hmm i haven't pulled this out in a while and so we're gonna figure it out together if this was a terrible idea or not oh it does give a nice glow okay this is not turning out horribly oh now it is because i just rubbed it under my eye i wanted that sort of semi-ethereal glow I have the air conditioning off so you can hear me. It is starting to get very hot in this attic. <laughs> so I am going to set my makeup with the Breezy Cloud Set by Kosas. This is my everyday powder. I use a ton of this and I really don't use powder all the time. I pretty much only use it in the summer just because I don't mind a little sheen, but right now this is like too much. I find this one is super finely milled and just feels lovely to apply, barely noticeable on the skin. The one thing I'll say is that I definitely reapply it through the day. I don't have a lot of experience with powders and I don't have many in my collection, so I can't say what might be a superior working product to another. I just like how this feels. I like how it applies. I like the compact, so I've been sticking with it and it's worked fine for me. All right, so that is my finished look, but as you can probably tell, this video isn't really about the makeup, even though I'm really digging this look because I think it looks hot. Today was just about chatting, rambling, if you will, getting to know me a little bit better. I know I didn't go into the super like ins and outs of my entire life, which was never the plan, but I just wanted you to get to know me a little bit better. Hopefully you will stick around here for the next video. If you made it through this video, which I assume is going to be quite long, then you are already a first class hero, so thank you. I have, as I mentioned, so many ideas for so many things that I wanna do on this channel. I know I'm not gonna get to all of them, I may not even get to half of them, but I, I'm i just pumped to make YouTube content. It's really fun for me, and I hope it's fun for you to watch. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.